Well, where the platform is used to link a customer and a supplier. That's in the vision, in the, uh, in the vocabulary of the European Commission, that's the collaborative economy. And the Commission is deeply convinced that this particular sector has a very big potential to provide economic growth and innovation. Innovation is a very big word. I don't know when did you like, I guess we've all visited the website of Airbnb and I'm still struggling to understand why that uh, particular company is a sign of uh, huge technolo technological and social innovation. I tend to think that our webmaster master could do a, a website like that. Uh, but anyway, anyway, that is the idea of the European Commission is that we need to have European initiative to strengthen and support the development of the collaborative economy in the European Union. Uh, and the outcome of this, one of the outcomes is that the, uh, the attitude of the Commission to lobbyists from Airbnb and from Uber is to be friendly, forthcoming and helpful. What does that mean in the case of Airbnb? And what is the objective of Airbnb? It is not to have a new piece of European legislation that would uh, enable them to expand their business. Uh, that they t I think they feel that such a strategy would be too risky. What they've been going for since early 2015 is to make sure that they and the Commission and the Council or the governments understand existing rules in a way that is, in, that, um, is amenable, that is helpful to the development of, uh, of Airbnb and similar companies. So they're trying to have the EU institutions say out loud and publicly, um, this and that membership, member states should not be allowed to do when they grapple with the phenomenon of Airbnb. One of the big achievements of, uh, of Airbnb was a couple of years ago when the Commission came out with a, with a document where uh, it said, for instance, that um, prohibitions or bans on Airbnb like the one you have in Palma de Mallorca at the moment should only be a measure of last resort and it should preferably not be used. Um, there are a range of other uh, tools that the Commission states very clearly in this, in this document that they see as being in breach of European law. And we have to take that very seriously. I mean, for sure, governments and city councils are very much aware of the, what, uh, how our European law is understood, because ultimately, if we end up with an understanding that, is, that does not allow cities to act, sooner or later, these new measures taken by cities will be rolled back. So, what's going on at the moment? Um, to be to cut uh, right to the chase. At the moment, there are two important developments we need to keep a very close eye on. The first is about, you could say, it's about our right to restrict or limit the use of Airbnb in, in cities. Um, as I said, some years ago, the Commission came out with a paper that would practically outlaw some of the measures. Now what uh, Airbnb is going for is for governments to do to make a new agreement on what should be allowed and what should not be allowed. And to looking at looking at the list of um, of cities I mentioned before, I'd say that at least Barcelona, Palma de Mallorca and Paris would be in the crosshairs already now. Once the European, the uh, Council of Ministers have agreed on a new interpretation, there is a serious risk that it will become even stricter. So there will be a new catalogue of regulatory measures that will be um, unavailable uh, for cities. So that's the first about our right to restrict um, the use of Airbnb that is under pressure. The second, you could say it's about our right to enforce the rules. 
And this has actually been a major political, not just a political battle, but a legal battle over the years. I'm sure perhaps uh, Catalin will, will mention this in her presentation on Berlin. Uh, um, under uh, the way that U European rules are understood at the moment by Airbnb, uh, Airbnb does not have to work with authorities to identify illegal apartments rented out by Airbnb. They're under no obligation to do that. That's the argument of Airbnb. I, I'm, I won't bore you, bore you with all the legal details, but this comes from a directive that it's 19 years old. So it's, this is way before there was anything like um, um, the development we see, we see today. Uh, in the so-called e-commerce directive, there is an article that reads um, that platforms are not obliged to work with uh, authorities on data. On in, in, uh, they're not uh, obliged to police their websites systematically, and that is used by uh, Airbnb across Europe to say to city councils, well you may be interested in the information that we've got on who rents out to who, but you're not, we're not obliged to give you that information. Which means that, for instance, in Amsterdam, they had a rule that said apartments can only be rented out for 60 days per year. But they, they had no real possibility to enforce it. They made a statistic a couple of months ago and realized that about 40% of the apartments rented out in Amsterdam were rented out for more than 60 years, 60, 60 days per year. So in response to that, Amsterdam is now going, has, has now set the limit even lower to 30 days, but they, was, they will still be struggling with the problem that uh, in reality they are not able to enforce it. So in the long run, such a situation will be intolerable. There, there will be continued pressure on Airbnb to work with authorities. Um, but at the moment, there is a court case at the European Court of Justice where this particular question is not explicitly, in, but between the lines, this, this political struggle will be decided on by the European Court of Justice. There is a case between, uh, it's a case between French hotel owners and Airbnb. And one of the questions is, what kind of a company is Airbnb? Is it merely an intermediary that links customers and uh, service suppliers, or is it something more than that? And Airbnb can count on the support of the commission. The commission will be there in court, and they will argue vehemently that Airbnb is just an intermediary. So there is no basis for demanding that Airbnb cooperates with authorities. That is in um, uh, um, the first uh, news that have come out directly from the European Court of Justice is a, is a first analysis from the most important uh, legal specialist, the Advocate General. And I would advise you not to read it if you suffer from high blood pressure. It's a really, really provoking analysis. I remember one sentence where the Advocate General states that, well, all the problems that relate to Airbnb are basically about demand and supply and not necessarily related to the issue of regulation. This is about how the market works these days. And the, uh, the um, um, uh, the, the, the word from the Advocate General is that uh, when this uh, case is finished at the European Court of Justice, Airbnb should re receive the honor of being considered as an intermediary and hence have no obligation to work uh, with authorities. So those are the two, those are the two main challenges uh, in, the, in the short run or the medium run. I'd say this is, these are two um, political developments that will unfold over the next year or so. And both of them are really crucial to what uh, can happen at the city level uh, with regard to, uh, to Airbnb. So while I'd say um, the reason why we have this pushback against Airbnb at the local level, of course that stems from from local protests, from local debates, from progressive city councillors, and I, that, those kind of things that unfold at the at the local level will always be 
the main energy and the main basis for change. But there is a need for us to keep an eye on what is going on at the European level as well. There is a need for us to consider what kind of political campaigns would have an impact even in the European institutions. Some things have, been, uh, have happened over the past uh, couple of years. There is now a coalition of cities. It's not quite clear to me which cities are actively active components, but they would at least they would be Amsterdam, Paris, Barcelona, uh, Napoli, and some others. Uh, their voices are being heard in the debate in Brussels now and then. And since we're speaking of pretty big cities in Europe, it has an impact. Um, it hasn't stopped the offensive of, uh, of Airbnb lobbyists nor of the European Commission, but it's a step in the right direction. What we need to do now is to figure out how to, how to step up to prevent that development that has been underway for the past year or so. Thank you. Yeah, hello everybody. Um, I'm very happy actually to have this panel today because uh, since two years I'm now working on the Airbnb issue professionally. Before I wasn't a member of the parliament, so I was more yeah, interested in this uh, issue as a re researcher working for a parliamentarian. Uh, since two years I'm now elected to the City Council of Berlin and there I'm responsible for yeah, city development, urban planning, tourism and a smart city and that is why I'm uh, having a very uh, concentrated eye on Airbnb and that's why I'm very much linking the question of what is a smart city and what is the neoliberal idea of a smart city um, to the question how is the housing market uh, constructed and what do we face uh, in the housing crisis uh, and what, what does this all has to do with Airbnb. So today I decided to not talk about the housing crisis in general because that would not, uh, there's not enough time to do this now as well. Um, and I decided to speak about seven reasons to hate Airbnb uh, because there's too many reasons to hate Airbnb and uh, I'm very thankful for T Tatiana's um, um, uh, talk and speech that you said there's so many people who need to re-rent uh, their houses to have the money to spend yeah, their rents, to have uh, money to pay their rents. So um, it is very complicated in a, on a social uh, level, but the same, uh, it is very complicated to um, focus on Airbnb just uh, within a housing question. It's not only about housing. It is very um, uh, important for us as uh, the European left <laughs> the, um, to link it to uh, questions of digital capitalism, platform capitalism, data extractivism, and data, data capitalism. So, because what is very clear, you cannot find good ways to um, enforce what, what Kenneth said, uh, to enforce uh, the, the rules, the local rules, just by your local authorities. And that has a lot to do with the very dynamics of this digital uh, system. So, yeah, let me today talk about uh, six reasons to hate uh, Airbnb and um, to talk about what we in Berlin uh, did to defend our city. Uh, which is not the end of the day because we need to do much more and as all the other cities we are also working inside a city coalition as all the other cities we are uh, still in a learning process and what is really the biggest problem is that always or quite always 
the mayors are old men do not understand anything about digital capitalism. I mean, this is really, really a big problem. So we should really, um, yeah, get to know a lot about the system and how it works. So um, first of all, we have to uh, speak about the commodification of housing. Uh, which is against the right to housing. As Tatiana told you, I mean, the situation is the same everywhere. Of course, the, the number of houses is different. The rules um, concerning the housing system are different. But in general, the system how Airbnb works is the same everywhere. And since the financial crisis and since people were really looking for places to bring their money, <laughs> Uh, they put it everywhere in our capitals, uh, all around the world, in houses. And um, yeah, I mean, if you have three houses all around the world, or ten, you can easily um, uh, give it away for uh, weeks or for short-term rentals uh, if you're not there and if you're a jet setter maybe. Uh, and then, um, yeah, rent it by Airbnb. So this makes uh, the system very successful. If you look to the case of Germany, you can see Berlin is the hotspot of um, Airbnb uh, in the rates. And uh, I would really like to um, comment that uh, this platform inside Airbnb made a really good job that they gave us all the data, because if not, we as a city would not know how many in the rates there are on Airbnb, which is super crazy, because that shows a lot about public control on this um, um, housing uh, market. So if you have a look uh, at the uh, second map, which you probably see not very good, <laughs> which is the, uh, the down, downer one, um, you can see it's always concentrated in um, special districts. And uh, there is uh, a connection of um, tourism tourism industry and uh, um, uh, sales on or the rental system on Airbnb. So the right to housing is really in danger or if it's even not <laughs> there, um, but uh, it is really in danger because of the liberalization of the housing market. So when we now see all the new buildings that are built everywhere, I mean, all the big cities you can go to, you will see like uh, there's super many constructions going on in all the cities and you always think, okay, who should go there? I mean, of course, people are going to the cities, but the way we are now confronted with a uh, building of new houses is kind of crazy. And uh, that is as well uh, directly linked to the liberalization of the housing market and that people uh, who has a lot of money have different houses in different cities. And as well, as we have seen it in the Spanish housing crisis, um, it is given to people as a chance to have uh, their pension uh, or save their pension, kind of. So it has a lot to do with the liberalization of our renting, uh, the renting market liberalization has a lot to do with the uh, pension liberalization uh, system, which is of course too much to talk about today, but it is really necessary to understand the whole um, uh, uh, real estate crisis in Europe after the financial crisis in Spain and what does that has to do with all the evictions going on since then and what that has to do with all the uh, new um, uh, investments going on nowadays in the uh, northern of Europe more than in the uh, southern of Europe. So the second reason of course is the rent explosion. There's a, this is a photo from a, an action of a, a left group in Berlin. We don't know who, but any group was <laughs> doing an action and they were making a grave on a, um, a sidewalk and uh, it shows um, that the, the rent, uh, like six euro per square meter, is nearly dying. So uh, what that says is it's all the rents are increasing and uh, people cannot afford their houses anymore, have not the possibility to pay their rents. So 
Um, Airbnb has a lot to do with this because if you want to get money out of your house, you can easily get more money by renting your house every weekend for 300 euros, which makes in four weekends in one month to uh, 1,200 euros, when before this house were gone for 500 euros per month. So it is very easy to understand that Airbnb is a problem in the housing market. And as well, um, for people who used to live together with other people in uh, like a WG, Wohngemeinschaft, I don't know, uh, in shared flats. Um, of course, I mean, I have friends who said, okay, it's really disgusting to have uh, sometimes people you don't want to see at the breakfast table. So it's much easier to rent now for the weekend and then I'm fine, I ha don't have somebody at the breakfast table I don't want to see in the week. So that makes also a big difference. Um, so let's not talk about the rent explosion and Mietenwahnsinn because this would also uh, take a lot of time. What is really necessary is the case of data capitalism and data extractivism and why we as the left have to talk about data politics. I mean, here in this um, um, picture you can see that where the uh, rental places are, um, it is, as I already said, unbelievable that we as a, um, yeah, as a city of Berlin do not have the data how many rental flats are ongoing on the market. Um, there were some uh, juristical uh, fights from uh, Berlin t uh, with Airbnb saying, hey, we want the data, give it to us. But um, Ireland, uh, <laughs> Airbnb always said, answered, no, we are so sorry, but our servers are in Ireland, we cannot give you the data. So what is the reality is that uh, we only know through journalists <laughs> and uh, researchers what's going on in this Airbnb rental market in Berlin. And um, that has, uh, makes, has a deeper meaning for the uh, question of what is going on with your data. I mean, if you rent your home via Airbnb, you give all your data to this platform. Airbnb is selling the data to whomever they want. And there's a big industry going on with the data to, uh, yeah, I mean, we are now living in a time that uh, if you live in, or if you have a shop in a, uh, in a street where uh, there are su uh, super ma so many rentals, uh, Airbnb rentals, um, the prices to rent a shop are increasing because it ha it's all um, going together and uh, uh, home house owners uh, look what's going on, okay, how can I rent, um, what can I get from this shop? And um, so as well, there's uh, some research going on about which streets are the most touristic streets and if you go to Berlin, if you haven't been there, you go to Berlin and you can cook, uh, have a look at your Google map and you can say, okay, what is the best spot, the most beautiful way to go from, he from A to B? You can choose between different ways, the most beautiful, the most, I don't know, uh, <laughs> touristic way and so on. So that has an impact on the market, the housing market and the uh, rent industry. So it is very obvious. So what we are asking for is, uh, I am asking for and uh, other people from other city as well, to talk about the data and to uh, make Airbnb give the data to the cities. What is not ha happening? Of, <laughs> of course not. Um, only Barcelona made a contract with Airbnb saying you have to give us the data. If not, you are, um, yeah, you are banned from the city. So finally Barcelona find a contract together with uh, Airbnb uh, that they have to give the data um, so that Barcelona, as you may know, they are very uh, much forward in digital um, politics and um, 
uh, yeah, self-organizing like communal infrastructures in data politics. Um, they can work with the data on their own and um, 